In this video I'm going to show you how to upgrade the solid state drive on your late 2013 to mid 2015 Retina MacBook Pro. I should point out that you probably void your warranty by doing this so do this at your own risk. You can buy compatible replacements from MacSales.com or Amazon and in capacities much larger than the standard 128 gigs that comes with the MacBook Pro, all the way up to one terabyte. But it's important to buy the right replacement and for that you'll need to know the model number of your MacBook. You can see here mine is a mid-2014 MacBook Retina and then we just need to check the compatibility of the drive we buy to make sure it's compatible with the 13 inch mid-2014 MacBook Retina which the one I bought is. So I bought a 256 gigabyte replacement for my 128 gig drive that came with my MacBook Pro. And here you can see it arrived from America. I had to pay 40 pounds import duty, which is a little bit disappointing because I live in the UK, but it's still cheaper than I could buy it for in the UK. Be sure to earth yourself before you touch the solid state drive because it is a sensitive electronic component and you could fry it and damage it if you are statically charged. So this is the drive we're going to want to put in my MacBook Pro. And to do that, we're going to need to format my existing drive so that it doesn't have all my data on it, and then somehow get my existing operating system onto this new drive. So let me show you how I do that. So I use the Time Machine software that comes with all Mac computers, and that basically allows me to keep a full backup of my entire MacBook Pro. So the very first thing I'm going to do is create an up-to-date backup of my operating system so that we have something to restore back to when I've installed the new drive. The next thing is to wipe all the data off the current drive inside my Mac, and to do that we're going to shut down the Mac and then start it up again, but this time holding Command and Option, or Alt as it's written on the keyboard, and R. And then when we do that it loads the sort of recovery program. We can then use the disk utility inside this to format the drive, and I'm going to format it quite securely because I intend to sell this solid state drive and I don't really want anybody getting my sensitive information off that drive. This more secure format takes a little bit more time but it's definitely worth it. And once it's completed, which took about 20 minutes, it's time to shut down the Mac and begin the surgery. Now you're going to undo all of the screws on the bottom of your Mac, and for this you'll need a P5 pentalobe screwdriver. Now you can buy these easily and readily on Amazon for just a couple of quid. You might get away with a small flathead screwdriver instead, but really you don't want to risk shearing the screws. Now the screws aren't all the same length, so it's important to remember which holes they came from. Now the bottom panel of your MacBook Pro should lift off quite easily. Now you can see all the scary electrical components inside your MacBook Pro, but there's only two areas really that we're interested in. The first is the connector between the battery and the main board of the laptop. Now we want to unplug this because if we accidentally create a short circuit with our screwdriver later on, then we could break the Mac. It should just lift straight up and then you can bend it back a little bit so that it doesn't rest back down and reconnect. Now we need a Torx 5 screwdriver bit to undo the screw which keeps the solid state drive in place. Be very careful with this screw. I sheared mine and it took three hours to get out. Once you've removed that screw, you should be able to tilt the solid state drive up a little bit and then just pull it out like you would any other computer card. Now we can fit the shiny new and bigger solid state drive and like most things like this, it's just the same as the removal but in reverse. Then it's time to re-secure the solid state drive to the main board with the T5 screw. And I don't know if you can see it here, but I've actually had to file a flat line into this screw so that I could use a flathead screwdriver to get this out because I sheared it so badly. Obviously remember to reconnect the battery supply to the main board at this point. It looks like I'm struggling here, but I managed it as soon as I turned the camera off. Then replace the backplate on your MacBook Pro and do up all the screws. Then it's time to turn the Mac on, again holding Command Option R to bring up the recovery console because now we need to restore my operating system to the new drive. It does require Wi-Fi to do this because presumably if you wanted to you could actually reinstall the Mac operating system over the internet if you hadn't got a backup. Now this process does take a little bit of time. 
Now I will say at this point that if you did try and just boot the drive without restoring anything onto it, then it fails. You just get a sort of directory icon come up and flash on the screen. Once the recovery console is loaded, I attach my USB hard drive, which has my time machine back up on it. And then I just follow the on-screen prompts to select the time machine. Usually my time machine is attached to my Airport Extreme, but I thought it would be faster to do the um, restoring of the operating system by USB than over my wireless network. The software asks you to select which backup you want to restore to. Obviously it's chronologically ordered, so the, the top one on the list it was the latest backup, and that's the one I want to restore. It then asks me to select the destination drive, which obviously in this case is the new 250 gigabyte solid state drive. Now the time it takes to restore the data to your new solid state drive depends a lot on how much data you've used on your hard drive and the types of files you've got. Generally it takes longer to transfer a gigabyte of data split into a million files than it does one gigabyte file. I was quite lucky, it took about an hour and ten minutes in total to actually do the restoration. And then once it was done, I just had to shut down my Mac and start it up again, and it loaded my own Mac operating system flawlessly the first time. And here you can see, if I'm looking at the disk information, the disk is now a 250 gig solid state drive. So mission accomplished. I hope this video has helped you upgrade the solid state drive in your MacBook Pro. Please leave a comment down below if you've got any questions about this procedure. And uh, thanks for watching.